this summer, only for one day, we had a peak consumption of 1,50,000. Our average was about 130, 135. So that means there is a huge capacity which is already there in the country, which is not being utilized. Uh, there were about 25,000 megawatt of generation capacity, coal-based, which was not being scheduled because there's no demand for power. And we talk of 35% of our villages and rural areas where there's no supply of electricity. And where there is supply of electricity, 24-7 does not mean getting 24 hours of supply in one day. It means 24 hours of supply in seven days. So that's uh, <laughs> most of the places that is something which is true. And we need to look at the basics. What is troubling? Why is it that the power sector is in this shape today? I don't know whether it is good, bad, or ugly, but it is in very, very critical stage. Uh, we have 29 states and seven union territories, and all the state distribution companies are in red. The cumulative loss, which was informed as of 31st March 2014, was 3,19,000 crores. And I'm told that uh, in 2014-15, this has got added by 65,000 crores. Of course, the uh, ministry has said that uh, there has been a trend of reduction from the previous year when 79,000 crore losses was added. We have reduced from 79,000 crore to just 65,000. If all this has to be written off, 2% of the country's GDP will get wiped. And that is the scenario that we are. Now, the question that comes to mind is that are all the state distribution companies absolutely dumb? Are they absolutely incompetent? Or is it that there are other players who have added to the confusion and have created this mess? And we need to clean this mess. If we are talking of 1,75,000 megawatt of renewable, we need to add if we are talking of smart grid, if we are talking of new technologies, because with a loss like this, there is no way that any distribution company will have money to buy any power. Let it be coal-based power, let it be renewable power. So I don't think we can kid ourselves and say that uh, this is going to come and this anyone will buy. And everyone has added to this because uh, as we have seen in the presentations also, distribution is in the last. Uh, it, it's given the least importance. Everyone talks about the new things, the renewable, the coal, the gas, <laughs> the generation. The distribution is a poor man's baby and let them go and handle it. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is that if the distribution companies are not going to be financially viable, there is nothing that will happen. No generation capacity will get, get added. No transmission will come, no renewable will come, no smart grid will come, no smart metering will come, and we need to handle this. Now, when we look at these things, there are three components why distribution companies are not doing good. One is, of course, uh, there are a lot of incompetent people in distribution companies, and they have very many vested interests. And that is one of the reasons, and that governance and administrative improvements have to be carried out. The cleaning has to take place, and it has to take place, which the ownership has to be taken. The second is that we have a large number of PPAs, and large number of PPAs which are for lifetime. So when we talk of that we can go and buy renewable power, there's no way that you can go and buy renewable power. You are stuck with PPAs which are at 5 rupees, 6 rupees, 7 rupees, and you are stuck with them for life. You are not stuck for them for one year, two years. And it's a take or pay obligation. You have, there are 25 years PPA which have further been extended for life. And there's no way that you can come out of it. There is no mechanism in that, that you can terminate those PPAs. And whether we like it or not, you are stuck with them. The second is regulatory commissions. We have uh, set up regulatory commissions in states. We have Central Regulatory Commission. We have APTIL. The structure is fantastic, but the accountability is not there. We have CRC with more than 800 cases, which <laughs> this is what happens when you question regulators. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, uh, so uh, we have CRC, which have cases which are six years, seven years old. I am told there are 300 odd cases which are more than five years old. Uh, there are cases uh, 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 which are uh, nine years old also. So until and unless we clean up that, there is a sense of accountability. We have state regulatory commissions who have not fixed tariff for many years. While we get, uh, uh, we can pat ourselves on our back and say that uh, there was an aptal judgment and it said that the state regulatory commissions have to uh, pass orders, tariff orders every year on 1st April. Uh, it has more been on paper than on actual usage. And until and unless regulatory commissions pass orders every year, tariff orders, which are cost reflective, it will be no way that we will have a scenario uh, whereby the discoms will have money to put in uh, the necessary technologies. In fact, uh, the regulatory gap between the average cost of uh, supply and the average revenue realization has been about 75 paisa to 1 rupee. And until and unless this gap is reduced, there is no way. It's a question of how much bleeding you can do. Can, can we make this 3 lakh 60 or 70 thousand crores, 5 lakh crores? Can we make it 10 lakh crores? It's a question of how much loss more can you sustain and how much can the economy sustain this sort of funding that goes on. And until and unless the regulatory commissions take ownership of it and sort this out, I don't think uh, we can really come up uh, with a sustainable power sector. The third is also on coal. Uh, uh, we discussed about coal and we discussed about the renewable cost of power. The coal prices and the, uh, and the transportation cost in five years has gone up by more than 100%. And uh, uh, the more the distance, the more is the cost. The quality of coal has been very bad. In fact, uh, though uh, uh, it, they say that it is a X quality coal, the, by the time it reaches, it becomes X minus 100 or whatever. So until and unless that transparency comes, the coal plants will continue to bleed and continue to charge uh, <coughs> distribution companies at a very, very unaffordable rate until and unless uh, uh, the cost parity comes in and they uh, bring in technology to ensure that the coal is tested both at the loading station and as received and the difference should not be so much. So there is an issue about coal and the transparency of how the pricing of coal because unlike power, coal prices are not regulated. So you have an input which is not regulated, the outputs are regulated and that's the challenge that one is facing. The other issue is about the renewable. I think in spite of all this, there is huge amount of interest amongst all the states in bringing in renewable power. Now, whether it is through rooftops or through RECs or buying bulk power to meet your uh, RPO obligations, state after state have gone for it. And uh, it, whether it is, again, uh, it is not only restricted to just one form, that is solar. Uh, there are states which have very large content of uh, uh, run of the river, mini hydro projects, Karnataka and Andhra, some states which have very, very high run of the river or, or Himachal and Uttarakhand. Or there are states uh, which have also met their obligations with wind energy. So in spite of all this, it's happening, but the pace at which it is happening is very, very slow. So if we want to have the vision of five years, then we need to change. Uh, and the paradigm shift that needs to happen is that the power sector in, has to be seen in totality and not in isolation. We cannot have a target of renewable energy without having, sought out it, having sorted out issues which are there with the distribution companies, with the, generation, with the other types of generation. So we need to look at it in totality and rather than looking at it as one specific area and work on those targets. Now, I think uh, personally, I strongly believe that renewable energy is a thing of the future. Uh, there is a uh, large potential that renewable energy, and especially uh, I'm looking at the solar energy can play, especially in cities. But solar energy on its own uh, will not be able to sustain the economics that one is looking because solar energy is seasonal. It is only for certain hours of the day. How do you package it with 
energy storage? How do you package it with demand side management? How do you package it with demand response? We did a project and we found that uh, uh, solar energy along with demand response of about 50 to 60 megawatt and energy storage of about 50 to 60 megawatt can sustain a 200 to 300 megawatt of solar uh, in a specific area. Now, that's the potential it has. But on a standalone basis, if we say that uh, it, is a, it is a viable, uh, we've done a study on this. We've spent nearly one year going through the numbers and through the load profile that we have uh, for Delhi. Uh, we did not find, because typically Delhi has a load profile where there are two peakings. There's a peaking in the afternoon from 1 to 5 o'clock, and there's a peaking in the night from 11 to 2. So when you have the night peaking, you need to have the other solutions which will take care of the peaking requirement. So solar energy can play a huge role and can be a game changer uh, in the future uh, because uh, that is something which can be done at a load center. You can generate it at the load center. You don't have to transmit it from uh, uh, very far off for a certain quantum and a certain quantity. It has the challenges, uh, uh, I think, uh, uh, some of the issues uh, about harmonics was raised, some of the issues about uh, how do you do the uh, balancing of it in terms of all of a sudden so much quantity of solar goes away from the system. How do you ensure the grid stability? Uh, and uh, some of the times uh, when we look at the German model and all that, we need to look at it that German has a backup. If they say 20,000 megawatt of solar, they have a 20,000 megawatt of uh, coal-based or nuclear power plants, which is a backup, along with a uh, large quantum of uh, uh, hydro generation. So the backing down if of solar or any other renewable is uh, uh, simultaneously uh, sh uh, taken care by scheduling of power from the other sources. So that sort of luxury I don't think as a country we will have, but definitely they can be much smarter solutions. We talked about the electric vehicles. Uh, there is a concept now that ele electric vehicles can be used for storage of en energy. So during off-peak, you store energy in electric vehicles, and during peak, you take back from them. So they become virtual power plants. So if you have one lakh electric vehicles or two lakh electric vehicles, you have one lakh virtual power plants which can do, uh, uh, we can, which can charge and discharge depending upon the requirement of power. So some of these points uh, I thought I'll share with you. That's all I have. Thank you.